Hello there. Welcome to our today's science lesson. The topic for the day being a continuation of the previous one and that is uh, communicating. Now in our previous lesson, we looked at uh, how we are supposed to communicate scientific work, putting in mind that you might be doing something very good, but if you don't communicate well, then it will end with you. But in the science world, or in a science world, we always want to see a continuation and an improvement of whatever is being done or was done by somebody. And that's why you will always remember and always see scientists going into history of whatever happened in a particular aspect. Mentioning the various scientists that were involved, when they did the work, how they did the work, and so on. So that the new scientists can at least repeat the same experiments or furthermore improve on the same work that was done by the previous scientists. And that calls in for good communication. So in our communication, that is in our previous lesson, we looked at how you have to record your work Present your work in the name of communicating to other scientists or to future scientists. And that was through you record your work in the tables or present your work, that is your data, in a graph form. Where we also looked at the various graphs one can use to present his or her own work. Today, I want us to look at another way of communication where what we did previously will make a subset of what we are going to do today and that is scientific report writing. You have to present always a report on whatever you have done as an experiment and that is in what we call writing a scientific report. Remember, I've started with the word scientific, meaning that we may have so many types of reports which may vary in one way or another, but for us today, we want to be very specific on how do you write a scientific report. As young scientists, we always need to learn on how to get a good scientific report so that in the future, and the future means just after learning this scientific report, we shall have to look at an example. And in that example, and the so many that you will be doing, you will need to give proper communication to stakeholders. And a stakeholder includes yourself. You may do something today, and after a year, you may want to review or to look at what you did. If you didn't have a good scientific report, then you will end up confused, wondering what you really did on that particular day. So to start off with the how to write the scientific report, in writing the report, as I've just said, we need headings, and these headings are very particular. And in being particular, it means Every heading has its own content it's supposed to carry. And the first heading we have in our scientific report writing is the purpose. So number one is the purpose. Our first heading is purpose. Now, what do we have under purpose as a heading? This is the aim of the experiment. This is the aim of what you are going to do. You cannot just start on anything. You must be aiming at something. You must be looking forward to do something in particular. And that is placed under the purpose. That aim must be very particular. You don't deal with the two things at the same time. You only look at one item or one issue, one object at a particular time, which will be stated categorically 
under the purpose of that experiment. Then you also have to look at uh, in that aim, in that purpose, what do you want to prove? What do you want to prove? You may have heard of something, but you are not so sure if it is true. So you will obviously enter into a lab, do something to prove, to confirm that achieved information that you priorly having about the same object, substance, item, system, whatever the substance you are talking about, whatever the purpose you have, but you will want to prove it. Just like when you say, without breathing, somebody cannot live. You have heard of that. You will want to prove it. Try to hold your nose and see if without breathing, you will survive. You will end up trying to struggle to show that indeed you are supposed to breathe for you to live. You will have done a proving aspect that you have to breathe for you to continue living. So that is our first heading in scientific writing. Always give the aim, always give the purpose of why you want or you are doing that particular experiment. The second title or the second heading or the second point in the report writing is state the hypothesis, your hypothesis. Now you have to remember that in setting the hypothesis is not mandatory. It is good, but it's not mandatory when it comes to scientific report writing. Now what is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is kind of an imagination one creates. Remember, in that Im imagination, you don't just imagine anything. You have to have imagined in an educated way. In fact, we call it an educated guess. An educated guess. You are guessing something, but in an education-based way in a systematic way, in a logical way, but I guess. For example, like uh, after this, we shall have to go through a certain process on how to write a report eh, on an experiment that I'll, uh, I will wish on your own, you can try it on, on your own, even at eh, home, because it will be an experiment that can comfortably be done at home. And may I mention it eh, in advance? So in our hypothesis, you have once maybe taken tea or a coffee or drinking a chocolate, I mean any beverage. But probably at that time when you are taking it, you are in a hurry. So you wanted it cool before you take it. What did you do? Probably you tried to use another cup to cool it or you just left it to cool as you are preparing yourself so that at the time of taking it, it should have a little bit cooled. But I'm sure you must have maybe gotten it different. On one day, it was drinking chocolate. Another day, it was coffee. This tea, this chocolate, this coffee, this cocoa, maybe at one day it had sugar. On another day, it didn't have sugar or enough sugar. Did all those beverages cool at the same rate? I'm sure not. So, if that is the experiment, and that experiment shall be carrying out, you must have guessed in a way which one of these could have cooled faster than the other. Whatever you came up with is a hypothesis, an educated guess of what was happening as you are leaving all those beverages on those different days to cool. So that's a hypothesis. But remember, it is not a must that you must have a hypothesis in your scientific report. A third heading, a third heading in our writing is materials. Materials.
materials. In any experiment anywhere in the world, eh, without materials, then you can't do anything. But under these materials, there are rules we have always to follow. Remember, since we began, I've always been mentioning this word rules, rules and rules and rules. Because eh, it is through rules that we always eh, do things are supposed to be done. So, in using the materials, there are rules you have to follow when you are writing your scientific report. And the rule, one of the rules is, eh, when indicating the material, make sure you indicate the exact one volume of the, of the apparatus used. Because under the materials we have apparatus, we have chemicals. Anything you are using, we categorize it as a material. Now, if this is an apparatus you are using to measure volume, specify the volume. Of what volume was it? For example, you can say it was 250 cubic centimeter or you can say mils. You remember in our previous lesson I mentioned the metric units for measurement and you can either use mils or cubic centimeters, it means the same. So here you have specified that apparatus and the volume. A good example here you can say, I'm going to use a beaker. And this beaker will be 250 mils. That will be so good. You will have set the material and the volume that uh, you are going to use. You can also look at uh, maybe you measured mass of any particular item. This mass must be in particular units. So you can talk of uh, the mass, but this mass must be measured in particular units. For example, in grams, kilograms, and so on. We commonly use grams in our labs. So you have to specify the units, correct units. You can also talk about these materials. You are probably going in to check on temperature. When checking on temperature, it means you are going to use a thermometer. We have various types of thermometers. You don't just say, I'm going to use a thermometer. We have a lab-based thermometer. And remember, when I say a lab, there is the scientific lab. There is also a hospital lab. So in the hospital, you will say a clinical thermometer, which has a particular range. In our lab, which is a scientific lab, a chemistry lab, we need to specify the thermometer we are going to use. So for example, I can say thermometer. And this thermometer, it has units to the range between The common thermometer we normally use is negative 10 degrees centigrade to 110 degrees centigrade or zero degrees centigrade and 110 degrees centigrade. You will have specified, first of all, the units. Remember, we have Kelvin scale and Celsius scale. In addition, thermometer. You don't just say a thermometer because there are various types of thermometers. So here we are using a thermometer. But also remember, this thermometer can be of either ethanol or mercury. So it's also good to specify. So here I can specify by saying mercury thermometer. This is a mercury thermometer. And so on. Again, under these materials, Remember, I said that eh, we have to specify the type of material, the volume of the material. But still, in addition to these materials, you have to be very specific in terms of uh, the material by mentioning the use. By mentioning the use. Like now here, we are using these for measurement. We are using this. All the materials I've mentioned here are used for measurement. 
or you can say the apparatus are being used for measurement. Now, we also have to include the size, which you can also see, like for the case of volume, we have specified the size that it is 250 cubic or mils. The second point is the, the procedure. The procedure. Now, when you look at the procedure, this is a systematic arrangement of events. This is an event. Carrying out an experiment is like an event which has a start and an end. And each part of that event must come at its rightful time. Procedure. So, under this procedure, you have to specify what is to be done at what time. What is to be done at what time. And if it is to add anything to something else, you have to specify exactly how much you are adding to how much or to what. A diagram is also good. A diagram can easily be used in the procedure here to show proper arrangement if it is possible to use a diagram. Like you can show by drawing the apparatus in a particular arrangement for step one, step two, step three, and so on. Just to show a clarity of how the events have to follow each other. And in this procedure, also, you don't give a step by skipping another one. Because remember, what you are doing, and you are going to write, you are writing now a report, this report is being taken to other people. Or may be kept, and one time, one person may want to repeat the same experiment that you have done. So if you mess up in giving the procedure, that person who will be following your good work will also get messed up. So to make sure that whoever does the same will never mess, then the procedure must be done in an orderly manner. Again, under this procedure, the measurements you give, the measurements you give must carry the exact units, the exact units of whatever you are using. If you are using something like a spatula in the lab, we have an operator we call a spatula. You remember when we were talking about the operators in the lab, I mentioned something to do with the a spatula. So you have such an operator in the lab. If you are using a spatula to scoop, remember we have solid substances in the lab, show exactly how many full of the spatula, how many. So if you scoop and you get it to be full, this amount, maybe it is full to this point, and two of them are being used, then say scoop substance, let's say K, substance K, two full spatula of substance K into maybe liquid L, very specific. If somebody repeats, will it do the same? If it is to do by mass, then using a measuring machine, a beam balance, an electronic balance, whichever machine that is being used, instead of just scooping, because remember, you may scoop and these substances vary by mass or weight. So by just scooping, you may get it a little bit wrong. So it will be good to get it by weight. If it is by weight, then specify maybe measure substance K 0 0.5 grams of it. Value, the figure, and the unit. Very exact. And as I said earlier, you have to use a, I mean a diagram where necessary 
to just give a clear view of the procedure on how the events are following each other. The next one is, to me and to all scientists, the most important. To me, remember I'm a scientist, and to you, an upcoming scientist, and to all scientists, this is the most important, and that is results. Why am I saying results are the most important? Results are the most important and the way you will record them because you may do, may have a very good aim, purpose, do all these materials very well, good procedure, but you come to mess up in recording results. Once you mess up with the recording of the results, the experiment becomes obsolete, useless. Nobody can value the report. Nobody can value the experiment. Nobody will want to follow up what you did. And even yourself, you will not be able to judge and give a conclusive, maybe uh, a conclusive report, a conclusive continuation of the same because what you got as a result are not giving sequential or systematic co conclusions on whatever you are doing and remember anything you do anything done on earth is only good if the results are good you can say you are you have learned if indeed at the end of the learning point you say i came in without knowing how to write a scientific report and now i know how to write a scientific report how would you know that you know how to write a scientific report you will think of an experiment and start writing a scientific report take it to somebody and the somebody approves that truly you have written a good scientific report that will be the result. You have written it and somebody has qualified what you have written as being good. Then you will say, my results are, go are good. So results are the most important aspect of any experiment, any procedure, any proof somebody is looking for. Now, when you look at these results, it includes so many things. This is where you will have what we did in our previous lesson, the tables. You are going to record your results in tables. You are going to present your data in graphs so that they can bring out that sense you really want, the sense, uh, the, uh, you really want to come out. That sense of oh, this is a comparison between this and this. In that graph, it will come out very clearly. Maybe you want to somebody to do an extrapolation of information. Somebody to do an extrapolation of particular information. Predict the future. Uh, the, the future. Predict the future experiments that can also be done. Results will show. Either in a graph form or even in table form. In table form, maybe somebody wants to do a comparison. In table form, you can easily give a comparison of just directly comparing this is 60, that is 40, and that is 20. If you compare 20, 40, and 60, by just the virtue of the figures in the table, it will be very clear. You want maybe to plot. You cannot plot without having a good table with good figures. So at the results point, this is where one must be very careful. And again, at the results point, it will show whether somebody did proper observations, proper measurements, or not. That is not the last point, or the last heading. After the results, we now do what we, do, uh, what we call analysis or discussion of the results. You do a discussion or analysis. 
discussion or analysis you do a discussion or analysis now what are you discussing or what are you analyzing you are analyzing the results so you can imagine if your results are wrong will you do a good analysis will you do a good discussion obviously not now what am why call it a discussion why call it a discussion a discussion here means you will be looking at what you have done at that time what you have just done in that particular experiment and what other scientists could have done in other places or some other time remember it doesn't always mean that whatever you are doing is the first time it is being done you might be the the a billion time a, a mini a million time person to do the same experiment so at least somebody did the same and did a report of the same which is either in books or internet encyclopedia whichever point of source of that literature you as a scientist you must have done some groundwork did some reading of that encyclopedia textbooks internet whichever the place then you came into that lab did the same experiment or a similar experiment so you will want to do a comparison of the two work the two piece of work that is yours and that somebody's that is a discussion but when it comes to analysis it means you are entirely looking at mainly your own work if this drinking chocolate took 10 minutes and that coffee took 12 minutes what could be the reason why this one took longer than the other one you are doing an analysis and that analysis you will have recorded that this one took 10 minutes this one took 12 minutes this one took 15 minutes under uh, the results but you are now doing the analysis of those results when doing an analysis you always have to be sincere just like you are when you are recording the results be sincere with your analysis don't force 10 to become 11 because maybe with 11 it will be favoring your way of analysis it might just be the, the, the one that is wrong the one you think is wrong might be the one that is right so always be sincere when you're doing your analysis and also when you're doing your discussion don't always assume whoever did it faster earlier was better than you might have made one or two mistakes and by you repeating the experiment maybe i've corrected the mistakes so always take your work to be good so long as you are sincere with what you are doing and lastly lastly in a report writing you do what you call a conclusion now in a conclusion you have to remember that when writing a, a conclusion it has to be short and clear short and clear and the conclusion must have the purpose in it that i was doing this and out of all that i did this is what i got you are getting that proof remember i talked about proving something you want to prove something in that purpose that is the aim so have you proved it after doing all of this has the approval been done but remember you don't write the whole thing as if you are repeating the same report no it has to be short clear and to the point making sure that the purpose is inclusive in that conclusion having seen the headings we need to have in our report writing to anyone anywhere a point can only sink if you do a practice
So, I want us to do some practice on how to write a report on an aim or a purpose that I have already mentioned earlier when I was talking about uh, the procedure and the results. So that you can see how you can come up with uh, a scientific report uh, with uh, these headings, with that particular type of experiment in uh, our point of interest, of our point of interest. And the experiment is going to look at, that is now, I've already started stating the purpose, the aim. The experiment will be talking about the cooling of beverages, but these beverages will be of different types. These beverages will be held in different types of containers. And these beverages may or may not have sugar. So we are going to look at three aspects. Three aspects. Type of beverage, the container, and does the beverage have sugar or doesn't have sugar? Three things. What does this one mean? In a science experiment, don't test two things at the same time. You only look at one item, one aspect, one issue at a time. But to make sure that we present our work properly, we have to know how we shall record our work. So before you start, you have to make sure that all the headings in the report are on your fingertips. Look at each one of them. What is it that I require at this particular time before you start? You know very well you will require materials. <clears throat> Are you in a position to get the materials? You know very well you will require procedure. Do you know how to set the procedure? You know very well you will require results. Do you know how to record the results? Once the answer to all of these is yes, then you are ripe to go. So I'm sure we are now ripe. Are we? I'm sure you are ripe wherever you are. So let's start, start off. What is the purpose? What is the aim? What do we want to prove? We want to prove the cooling rate of sugar and sugarless beverages, the cooling rate of sugar and sugarless beverages of drinking chocolate, tea, and cocoa. Drinking chocolate, tea, and cocoa held in different containers, very specific. Cooling rate, so we want to look at cooling rate. Of what? Beverages. Cooling rate of beverages. How are these beverages? Has sugar, no sugar. So the beverage can either have sugar or no sugar. But we need to know which type of these beverages. Maybe to reduce on the time. Let's just go for two. Let's talk about tea and drinking chocolate. So we shall just look at those two. But that's again not the end. In which container?
So these containers, you have to state the type of containers and the volume. So, one of the container will be a 200 and, uh, 250 mil beaker. Cup, just a normal cup, but it should be able to carry 250 mils. Maybe you can have also a mug. So we are very specific here. What are we going to do? We want to look at the cooling rate of what? Beverages. How are these beverages? These beverages will either have sugar or without sugar. And what are these beverages? The beverages we want to look at are tea and drinking chocolate. Which containers are we going to use? We are going to use 250 ml containers. Of which type? Beaker, cup and mug. Very specific. Because remember, we, we have substitutes of all of these. Instead of a beverage, I can talk of soda. I can talk of any other liquid. When it comes to having sugar, instead of sugar, I can talk of table salt. Totally different from sugar. If I talk about tea and drinking chocolate, I can talk of any other beverage. I had even mentioned cocoa. There are so many different types of beverages. So we have to be specific. Our point of interest are these two. And when it comes to containers, there are also so many types of containers. Now, if we don't specify the way we have done it, we shall end up getting mixed results. And at the end, when it comes to discussion and analysis, you will be stuck not to have any conclusion at the end of the day. So, in our purpose, we have seen our purpose being to investigate the cooling rate of beverages that are either sugarless or with the sugar in different types of containers. Let's look at the hypothesis. Hypothesis. Now, in my hypothesis, remember I said that you may have it or you may not have it. But I will wish us, I will wish we have one. So in our hypothesis, try also to get yours. When identifying your hypothesis, you have to look at all that you are going to use, all that you are going to apply. Looking at these containers, this is where maybe probably my hypothesis will come from. I, will, I can easily say, at one time, I had to take maybe drinking chocolate that was having a sugar and accidentally spilled on me. How did it scotch you? Then there was another day, just before you added in sugar, you are moving with that mug of drinking chocolate, then it again spilled accidentally. It burned you. Was the burning the same? I'm sure not. The one with the sugar had a bigger burn than the one with the, without sugar. So that one can aid, can assist in you getting the hypothesis. Again, looking at the containers, looking at a mug and looking at a beaker. A beaker has lighter materials, a mug has thicker materials. So having thicker materials, it will lose the heat energy slowly. But the bigger will lose heat energy much faster. So I can easily give a hypothesis that that beverage that will be having no sugar, beverage, no sugar, and in a beaker will cool faster. But remember, that hypothesis may be right or may be wrong. That's why it's not a must that you require a hypothesis. So if it is wrong, it will be proved by you going through all these processes. If it is right, it will also be proved right by all 
these processes. So that is my hypothesis that the beverage, the beverage that will be held in a beaker and having no sugar will take a shorter period to cool. Let's see if it is true. We now proceed with our experiment. So in our next story is now to look at materials. We look at materials. Which materials do you require? So the materials you require, remember under materials it means chemicals, materials, apparatus, and all that. So we require sugar crystals, sugar crystals, we also require the beverages. So that is, we require the drinking chocolate. And we also require that tea, the tea leaves. So the beverages. We also require the containers. As I've just left them here, we have the container. We have the container that we require. And remember, very specific in terms of the volumes. It must be that of 250 mils, beaker, cup, and mug. So we have those ones. What else do we require? Remember, we are talking about cooling. How will you know that eh, it has cooled? In science, we always eh, have two things, qualitative and quantitative determination of issues. When you talk about quantitative, it must be visible. Being visible means it must have a starting and a, an ending point. So if our tea or drinking chocolate will be at 90 degrees centigrade, when we talk about cooling, to what level? We have to get a common point of cooling. So we can talk about cooling from 90 to let's say 40 degrees centigrade, which will be a sure temperature for you maybe to take that beverage. So what do we require? A thermometer. But remember, I also say that you don't just say a thermometer. You have to be very specific by specifying which type of thermometer. So the thermometer must be a mercury thermometer of a range. We can still work with the zero degrees centigrade to 110 degrees centigrade. That one is a sure thermometer you can apply anywhere or you can as well use that, that of <coughs> sorry, negative 10 degrees centigrade to 110 degrees centigrade thermometer. What else do we require? Time. Remember we said eh? which one is faster? How do you tell this one is faster? by looking at the time. I've set the experiment at 8 a.m. By 8.10 a.m., this one has dropped the temperature from this to this time. So we require a stopwatch. We require a stopwatch. Remember the stopwatch is standard. It will give you time in terms of Hours, minutes, seconds, and microseconds. So that we just get everything very perfect. What else do you require as materials? This beaker may be uncomfortable maybe for you to hold. You may need something to hold it. Or a particular point of arranging those items. So you require a working table. Working table. That's the material you require. You cannot work from space. You require a working table. And so on. And as you can see, 
any material you use must have if it requires a unit then it has to get a particular unit then lastly here as a material remember we are talking about sugar we are also talking about these beverages <coughs> how much are you going to use you don't just roughly scoop if you are to scoop count how many spatulas are you going to use if you are not so sure with that you can go for weight so we need a weighing machine a weighing machine which will be to give us units in grams so that you can get exact amount of sugar crystals in this type of uh, this beverage at this time then when it comes to the, the other one you still get the same amount of sugar crystals being used so weighing machine which will give us units in terms of grams that is uh, the materials then from there we need now to look at uh, the procedure we need to look at the procedure with the procedure remember these are point where you can easily mess up your experiment or succeed with a lot of laughter how the procedure must be step by step and if a diagram is required let it be there and very clear to the point so the starting point here is you first of all have to know which aspect which point to go for first remember there is the issue of sugar and sugarless there is the issue of the type of container you are going to use so which one are you going in for first so let's go in first for the one that has sugar and the one without sugar but with one particular container so which means i'm introducing something here there is what we always call variable and non variable in an experiment variables and non variables in an experiment so what we are going to vary is one with the sugar the, uh, the sugar is it there or is it not there but we shall maintain something non variable the volume and the container into which these beverages will be held and i can use a diagram label the diagram to give me an easy time so i'm going to have the diagrams i'm using beakers i can have my beakers four of them <clears throat> why four of them remember i'm working with you with the two beverages you can as well work with one so long as you are varying i decided to work with the two you can work with three you can work with one so long as there are things you are trying to compare to prove a fact so i'm working with the two these two will be for drinking chocolate and these two will be for tea this is standing in for drinking chocolate and tea standing in for tea we must get all of them having the same volume so they will all be at that point whereby we can assume we are having probably even 200 mils all of them are having 200 mils then in the two of them we shall add sugar crystals so for dc i will have sugar crystals in this and in t i will have sugar crystals in that remember the sugar crystals here and here must be of the same amount 
let's assume we have added 5 grams of sugar crystals. 5 grams of sugar crystals. Same volume. 200 mils, 200 mils, 200 mils, 200 mils of the two beverages. The other thing you have to get very clearly is the initial temperature. We have to get the initial temperature of all of these to be the same. So we shall assume we have gotten them very correct to be at 90 degrees centigrade each. Each one of them is 90 degrees centigrade. How did you get to know the temperature? You must have used a thermometer. So you checked the thermometer. And when checking the thermometer, make sure that the bulb of the thermometer does not touch the base neither the walls of the beakers. Then, <clears throat> once you have confirmed, all of them are at 90 degrees centigrade, you can set out one at a time. Because sometimes working on the four at the same time, it will be an issue, one at a time. So once you have confirmed it is at 90 degrees centigrade, at a starting point, you, set, you, you now set your stopwatch. You set your stopwatch where hours will be zero, minutes zero, seconds zero, microseconds zero. Then start off the stopwatch as the liquid, uh, as the solution. Remember being a beverage, that's a solution, is cooling. As it cools, you will be checking on the time. But now remember, this is something that can take a very long time for you to get to the point. So for you maybe to get a realistic point, for you to get a realistic point, you can maybe pick on reducing the temperature from 90 to maybe something like 90 to something like 85 degrees centigrade so that you make it a little bit faster or 80 degrees centigrade. Still that is cooling. 90 to 80 or 90 to 85 so that you can take a shorter period. Now, you have just done that good experiment. What next? You remember very well, if you can remember very well in our previous lessons, we say that when doing anything in science, any observation you make, do the recording immediately. Do the recording immediately and sincerely. So, as you are doing your procedure, the results point must be ready. As you are doing your procedure, the results point must be ready. And what is this results point? I said that for you to give the results, it is good you give it in a table form. So, you must have your tables ready. And in these tables, each column or each row must have a particular heading clearly stated. Now, we are just talking about tables. Let's have an example. I may not give all the tables of all the aspects we shall be checking on in this experiment, my, but may I give just an example like on this aspect of checking on the cooling rate of these beverages with or without sugar. Which example of a table can you have? Now from an example of a table that I'm having here, I'm having titles. The first one is for tea and the second one is for drinking chocolate. Below it we have with the sugar, WS with the sugar, NS no sugar, with the sugar, no sugar. And here we have the time. So we have to record the time that each one of them will take to cool from you, you will have already specified in your purpose that eh, it will be cooling from this temperature to this temperature. 
just to shorten the, uh, the time we are going to take for the experiment, I've said you can pick from 90 to 85 degrees centigrade. So you don't have to record here the temperature because you have already set the temperature in your purpose that I will be cooling from this temperature to this temperature. But the thermometer must be there to confirm to you that indeed it has cooled to that. Again, you don't have to state the volume because the volume will have been stated in the procedure that measure this amount of beverage into this container. So here your point of interest is only results. Now, relating our procedure to our results, relating procedure to results, you will have measured the temperature cooled from 90 to 85 in a certain period for drinking chocolate with sugar. Drinking chocolate with sugar. How long has it taken? Just assume the figures. So drinking chocolate with the with the, this no sugar and this one is with the sugar and we are talking about this one so it is drinking chocolate with the sugar let's assume it has taken 15 minutes 15 minutes 20 seconds 20 seconds now, if you look at this way of recording, it's not recommended in science. In the previous lesson, we, when we were talking about how to record some of these units, it is good you record in seconds. So, convert the 15 minutes into seconds. The answer you get, you add 20. That will be the correct way to record. So, 15 times 60. We get 15 times 60. That is 900 seconds. So with the 900 seconds, you add there 20. So the correct way to record here is to write 920 seconds. 920 seconds. Units must be in brackets. 920 seconds or if you don't want to indicate the units here then you can have time and under time you say in seconds once this one is set this way this side then the figures you have in the table must not carry the units because the unit has already been indicated so this one becomes now 920 Carry on to the second experiment. Let's imagine that maybe it is going to take 13 minutes. 13 minutes, convert it. Let's assume this one to be 710 seconds. When it comes to tea, tea with the sugar. Tea with the sugar, maybe it takes 1,000 105 seconds then no sugar maybe it takes 890 seconds these are imaginary figures but if you do it be sincere enough and record the exact figures so that when it comes to proper discussion and conclusion you get it very clearly so this is an example of how you can interpolate your work during recording of results this is in particular looking at sugar and without sugar do the same when you vary the cups beaker cup mug you can as well also do the same when you are even varying the volumes. If you have 200 and another one 100 of the same now, of the same beverage, will it take the same period or not? That is a point I leave to you so that you can be able to carry out that experiment 
And I'm sure the day you will finish, you will be happy and you will know which beverage to work with. Now to discuss, we may not do so much about discussing because the results are not complete. I've only given out one. So just looking at this one under discussion or analysis, just looking at this one, I can easily say that tea with the sugar takes a longer period to cool from 90 degrees centigrade to 85 degrees centigrade while drinking chocolate without sugar takes the shortest time to cool. So if you are in a hurry, you want to go for a journey and you are being told you are late, the best beverage to use therefore will be what? Drinking chocolate. This is now factual. You will have done the experiment. You will not go in for tea. You will go in for chocolate. And even if it will be with the sugar, at least it will, it will take a shorter period. But if you don't want even that sugar, you are only interested in the beverage, then you can take it without sugar so that it takes a shorter period and for you to be safe not to get your lips and tongue burned. Um, now, in conclusion, in conclusion, we can say that in doing an experiment to prove that drinking uh, beverages have different cooling rates with or without sugar, tea is found to take a longer period to cool with or without sugar as compared to drinking chocolate, which takes a shorter period. When you look at that conclusion, I've mentioned the purpose. What was the purpose? The cooling rate of beverages. I've also mentioned something to do with the, the results, what we were doing inside. And that is, tea took a longer period and drinking chocolate took a shorter period to cool. And in the conclusion, I've said tea takes a longer period, drinking chocolate takes a shorter period to cool. I hope you are going to do this experiment for your own good, even in your own home consumption, so that at one time when you will be in a hurry, you will know which type of beverage to go for. Go test with all the types of beverages you have at home, and also test with all types of maybe cups or mugs you have in your home so that you know which type of mug or cup to be using when in a hurry. And maybe just to add on something, look at also the shape of the cup or mug. We have those that can be taking this shape, those that will be a bit wider, and any kind of shape. Test with all of them. This is the beauty of science. Prove it. Don't be told. That marks the end of our lesson today. Thank you.